We've been talking about waiting on the Lord. Add to your prayer list Cindy Rutherford. She's got a bad migraine tonight, so make sure that you put that on your prayer list. Yeah, he's on the list. Good, not cancer. Well, that's good. That's a quick answer to prayer. Pray for one minute, get a text, make some next. Amen, I like that. That's good. Wow. Amen. Praise the Lord. We can work through it if it ain't cancer. Say amen. All right. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. We've been talking about waiting on the Lord. Waiting means trusting the Lord. Waiting means obeying the Lord. Last week, uh, week before last, waiting means delighting in the Lord. Waiting means committing to the Lord. Now tonight, we're going to look at waiting means resting in the Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 37, 7, I gave you the wrong scripture, Psalms 37, 7, it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. The definition of the word rest means to ease after work. <laughs> you should never rest until you work first, say amen or oh me. See, America's got it wrong. A little boy came up to me before church tonight was talking about having to get up in the morning at 6 o'clock and go to school. I said, son, it'll make a man out of you. I said, when you get older, you got to go to work. And you're going to have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go to work. I ain't going to work. I said, yeah, you are too. <laughs> you're going to go to work one day. And uh, that's, that's part of life, amen. But rest comes after work or effort. Freedom from anything that tires, troubles, disturbs pains quiet and a support I'm glad for rest aren't y'all every night when you grab that pillow and you roll over in the bed you're glad for rest amen everybody I didn't think rest was important I used to think you'd run 24 hours a day 7 days a week and never sleep and then I come down with sleep apnea and I began to realize when I my wife kept telling me you fall asleep driving I said I am not yeah you are too I am not I'd go to work on my computer and I'd be, my head be touching the computer screen. I'd been gone to sleep working on the computer. Didn't know why, I just stayed sleepy all the time. Found out because I wasn't sleeping. At night I was waking up 90 times a night. But I'll tell you one thing, the greatest thing since peanut butter is a sleep apnea machine. Say amen. When I get ready to go to bed at night, I slap that thing on my face and I'm gone. And so is Wendy. She says she can't stand the sound of the thing. Amen. But I sleep good with that machine on. I can promise you that. Everybody's got to have rest. If you don't have rest, you can't work. You can't produce. You can't go forward. And in the Christian life, there's a different kind of rest you got to have. And if you don't have this rest, you're not going to survive. A lot of Christians today are not surviving because they're not resting in the Lord. Instead of resting, I know y'all have never heard of this word. I know you don't understand it. It's above your pay grade, but I'm going to help you, okay? Some people live in a state of worry. Yeah, uh, y'all got, got it, huh? Worry. There's an old song, Why I Worry When You Can Praise. I believe some of y'all turn around, Why Pray When You Can Worry? I believe that's the way some people live. They'd rather worry about stuff. Folks, worry's a sin. Now, I'm going to tell you, worry's a sickness, too. Some people, they're not happy unless they got something to worry about. I used to have a senior adult back home. If she didn't have something to worry about, she'd get on the phone and find something. She'd get on the phone and call everybody she found something to worry about. Then she'd go back and call everybody back so they could worry with her. You know, that, that's, look, worry is a sin. Rest comes when you have faith. That means, Paul Mary Mayberry, bless her heart, when did tell you that woman was the meanest woman ever lived on two feet? I can't wait to see her in heaven because I won't know her. She's going to be sweet. I, I won't even know who she is. Somebody's going to have to point her out to me when we get to heaven. She was never happy about nothing. Am I lying or telling the truth? If she, she'd get up in the morning looking for something to be angry about. I mean, she'd get in the car. Paul Wendy done got Brandon ready for church and got him dressed and got him in his seat. She'd get in the car, fighting with Wendy about the car seat. Wendy'd say, 
Leave him alone, Miss Mary. Yeah, I'm getting him out of that seat. He don't like, oh, she was terrible. I mean, and then you get that settled and she'd start picking on my air condition. Cut that air conditioner off. I'm freezing. It was just something all the time. She was never happy. So one day on the way to church, she was talking about her son. Had a struggle in life with her son. I said, Mary, you just need to take that thing to the altar and leave it there. Just leave it alone. I said, and I tried, she loved to bake. So I think, I'll tell her about baking. That'll, that'll get through her thick skull. That'll help her. I said, it's just like when you bake a biscuit, because I had made the many of them at McDonald's. I bake more biscuits than y'all have ever eaten, I can promise you. I made 25 dozen a day for over a year and a half. I've made my share of biscuits in my life. And I told her, I said, Mary, they taught us at McDonald's that you mix that dough up and you put it on that big old plastic thing and you sprinkle some flour and you knead it twice and stop. Because if you keep kneading that dough, that biscuit's going to be so hard that they will call you, who was that woman on Green Acres? Help me. Ava Gabor, I don't know what her name was on the show, but you remember her biscuits? She'd make pancakes you could knock a, a jackrabbit out with. Amen? Uh, and she, she, I mean, between her and Ellie Mae Clampett, there weren't no hope in this world of uh, bacon. I probably needed that stuff to death. That's how a biscuit will come out if you need that thing. We were to turn it over twice, stop, roll it out, and cut them. And I'd cheat. We always tried to make, my, head, my brain's dead, make your goal every day of how many biscuits out of a, a bag. You're supposed to get 40 biscuits out of a bag of mix. And I was determined every day I was going to make my quota. I was going to get 40 out of every bag. And so if there was any scraps left over, I'd nobody looking I'd need them things up rolling back out and I'd get caught every time that manager would come back and say you cheated again I'd not cheat he said this biscuit over here is not hard this one over here I can knock you out with it's like a hockey puck and he caught me because if you need a piece of bread too much it's going to be hard I said Mary when you worry about something you're needing it too much and you're making it harder on yourself kind of looked at me like a sheep in a new gate, but I done got through. I said, hallelujah. It's a miracle. I got something through that woman's hard head. Whoo, I'm what some kind of a preacher, praise God. I got it through. During the invitation, I know she got up out of the seat. She come down and hit the altar, tears run. I said, glory to God. Whoo, I done done something now. I done knocked a home run. Got in the car, taking her home. I said, oh, Lord, here we go. She's kneading the dough. I said, Mary, you're kneading it again. You're kneading it again. She just, just didn't, get, didn't get through it. I was wasting my time. Folks, when you leave something with God, leave it with him. Don't walk away and start worrying about it. God can't answer your prayer when you do that. I hope you, I'm trying to make a point here. If you do that, you're not going to get your answer to your prayer. It's not coming. Because if you really trust him, you're going to leave it at that altar. Amen? You're going to leave it there. You're not going to pick it up. And You're not going to call up 25 friends and cry. And moan, go, 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 go. That dumb dog. I'll be glad when I get rid of my son and his dog. I ain't never. We come home today and I thought that dog was going to be happy because we home. She's been in a cage for three hours while we're at church working. She's going to be happy. No, oh, not that dumb dog. We put her outside, left the door, and she gets at the door, sticks her long nose under the edge of the door. I said, Charm, you've got the whole world out there. You're not in a cage. Be happy. Run. Chase a bird. Chase a squirrel. Go across that line and get shocked. Do something. Just get away from that door. No, not that dumb dog. She's got the whole yard running. That's what Christians do. God's done told you. Just leave it alone and go on. But you don't do it. You sit down, you cry and you moan and you belly ache and you cry. Leave it alone. Rest. Rest means I believe God's got it. I believe God's got it. I'm going to go on and serve the Lord, live my life. I'm going to be happy. I mean, have you ever met a Christian like that? Don't you hate them? Y'all a dead crowd. I mean, just nothing ever bothers them. They just happy go lucky. Sean Horbitz are worse than the world. 
I mean, the whole world can be falling around and strong orbit. I mean, the sky is raining dark clouds of thunder and lightning on his life, and it'd be all right. All everything's good. I don't. He's got that gift. He can just leave it alone. Leave it with God. He don't worry about a thing. He's happy when he's broke. He's happy when he's got money. He's happy when he's sick. I ain't never happy when I'm sick. I'm sick. My wife would tell you I'm a murderer to live with. I hate it when I'm sick. But you know what? He's happy all the time. Some people have that gift. Listen, seek the gift of rest. Amen? Learn to trust God. First of all, rest as he is defending us. Now, folks, if you've got a problem in your life, it's because you've got an enemy. I don't care what that problem is. You've got that problem because you've got an enemy. Say amen or oh me. Now, the Bible says in Psalm 59, 9, because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. If you've ever studied the book of Job, the whole reason Job was in the mess he was in was because he believed God. He was, the Bible said he was a man who eschewed evil. That meant he avoided evil. He lived a righteous life. He'd done what God said do when God said do it. He loved the Lord with all his heart, soul, and mind. And he gave God 100% of his effort. And the devil one day went to heaven and said, you ever thought about your servant Job? He called him out. And God said, okay. Go out and do what you ever got to do. See if you can discourage him. And buddy, he nailed him. Lost his wealth lost his servants, lost his children. Let me tell you something. Some of you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever lost a child, you know how hurtful that is. I don't think there's any hurt in the, worst in the world than losing a child. And folks, he lost all his children. And one failed sweep, tornado took him out. Lost all his cattle, lost all his servants, and God left him with a nagging spouse. If you ever had a nagging spouse, you know what I'm not about, huh? And I mean, he, he was on the bottom. But you know what he said? Don't ever forget this. He said, I know that my Redeemer liveth and that I shall stand with him in the latter day. You know what that meant? Because look, anybody that studied the Bible knows what's the first book ever written in the Bible? Book of Job, not Genesis. Book of Job, first book written in the Bible. When he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth and I'll stand with him in the latter day, he was talking about a long way down the road. Long way down the road before the Lord come. He hadn't come back yet and he's on his way. But folks, he believed. And you know what? He got 10 times the cattle, 10 times the servant, and he had 10 more children. So him and that spouse must have got along after that. Y'all are not stupid. Okay, they must have made up. Amen. They must have got back together. Had ten more children. You say, well, why didn't they? Why didn't they get back? To, what was it? Four times? It wasn't ten times? It was it ten times? Four times? Two times? No, it was more than that, wasn't it? You sure about that egghead? Okay. Anyway, somebody said, yeah, you're right because they said, yeah, I got it. Be quiet. I got it now. <laughs> said, because God back double back everything you had. He said, but he didn't have twenty children. But he didn't lose the ten he had. They just went to heaven. Say amen. So he had 12, double children. So God gave it all back. Why? Because he believed. He rested in faith in God. Number B. Rest as he's saving us. He's defending us against the attack of the enemy. If you're faithful to God, you're going to get attacked. The enemy's going to call your name up. You're going to get attacked. And he'll, he'll, he'll help you. But secondly, realize that while you're waiting, He's saving you, not your soul, but saving you from the trouble you're in. Saving you from the trouble and the heartaches and the sorrows and the sicknesses that you've got. Look at the lamentations. The word lamentation, I'll tell you nerves up. That means cry, weep. Lamentations 325. The Lord is good unto them that, three words. Do you want God to be good to you? Then wait for it. Wait for it. I done told you. I didn't get married till I was 26 years old. And I'd done, done 25, 40, 50 weddings before then. I thought I'm always the preacher and never the groom. I thought, God, I ain't gonna never get married. Now I've been married for 30 years. 
where did 30 years go? But if you wait on the Lord, he'll answer your prayer. Now, I believe if Wendy had known what was going to happen, she would have got out that choir and run that day I met her down at that church. But keep your head still. <laughs> you know, sooner or later, God finally gave me a wife. I finally had a wedding of my own. And now I've got to have one for my son. Now I'm stupid. Pray for him. But anyway, folks, listen to me. You wait on the Lord. Why are you waiting? Because he's working it out. Give God time to do what he's got to do. Now, there's been some times, I'll be honest with you, I was trying to get ahead of the Lord. Now, y'all would never do nothing like that, but I have. And I'd have some plans in my head, and I'd say, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and the Lord won't work it out. I'll never forget one time, this was long, you can be in a church long enough, sometimes you can tell stuff nobody remembers because it's so long ago they won't remember it. But I remember one time I, I had something worked out here at the church. I said, Praise God, this thing's going to work out. This is working good. And come to church one Monday morning, the air went out the balloon. Y'all ever had that happen? I had it happen this morning. I said, I'm going to ride my Lincoln today. I hadn't drove in a while, so I'm going to drive it around town and get the battery built up in it. Walked around the car, and I thought, that thing is awful low to the ground. There was a reason it's awful low to the ground. I believe Charm done bit my tire and flattened my tire, I believe is what she done done. This flat as a pancake. I said, well, back in the enclave I go. Won't be driving that today. It was flat as a Hey, the air went out of my plans. I had done plan, plan, plan. But see, God saved me from a whole lot of heartache. When I found out what I found out about the plans I'd made and what I'd, I said, thank you, Lord, you saved me from a disaster. See, God's sometimes making you wait because you're fixing to mess up. <laughs> you're fixing to pull, throw a wrench in the monkey works. Just, just be patient and wait on God because he's going to work it out. And sometimes he's saving you from yourself. <laughs> not from the enemy, but from yourself. But we've got to learn that waiting on God's not a bad thing. Resting in faith's not a bad thing. It says, uh, to the soul that what? Seeketh him. While you're waiting, talk to him. While you're waiting, read his word. Seek him. Because that will give you more faith. In him. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. The only way you're ever going to wait, the only way you're ever going to get through what you're going through, be patient enough to let God do what he's got to do, is seek him. Talk to him. Let him know that you're there. You see, repeating a prayer request is not an exercise in futility. You've got to understand what's really going on. God knows you're still in contact. When I used to work at McDonald's, there was a woman that worked there, a girl, she's two years older than me. Her name was Moretta Rucker. I'll never forget her name. Long as I live. She, when I first started working there, she made me so mad I could bite a ten penny nail in half. I'd be up there working, we'd be ready to close, and she'd been and cut the bin back, no food up there. All of a sudden, I'd hear that beep go off and drive through, and she'd come out, I need two Macs and a quarter pounder. I just cleaned my grill. How many of y'all ever worked fast food and know how hard it is to clean a grill? That is a pain in three quarters, is it not, Sister Lily? And that'll kill you. Yeah, yeah. Then, then, I mean, it'll make you, and I, when you're young and stupid, y'all act like y'all ain't never been young and stupid. Everybody has. And you first start working somewhere, you don't understand the whole gamut of everything that's going on. You just started working there. And I'd get mad and slam the hand over down. I'd fix that and have, I'd be. And the rule was when somebody called back something, what are you supposed to say? Thank you. And repeat what they said. Am I right? I'm telling the truth, Anna Sister. You repeat what they said. Thank you so that you know you got the order. I'm so mad. I don't give a flip about that order. So Moretta. She'd come back, I need a Big Mac and I'll order a quarter pound of a cheese. I'd get so mad at her, I just, I wouldn't even answer. Until the boss come around the corner and said, did you hear that? Yeah, you need a Big Mac and a quarter pound. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I had an attitude. Y'all never have no attitudes, do you? Y'all always okay. 
I won't. But I learned as I continued to work there through the years, it was important to communicate with whoever's up front so they'd know what's going on. You know what's going on. Everything's happening. You got to communicate. Folks, God's got everything in control up there, but it don't look like it down here, right? So every once in a while, you got to call up and say, are you there? And he'll say, yeah, just wait. Moretta would come back, still waiting on the Big Mac quarter pounder, working, working. And I'd let her know it's on its way. One minute, two minutes, three minutes, it's on its way. Hang loose, coming, coming. But you communicate it so they'd know whether or not they had to pull the car out of drive through wait or what was going on. When we're waiting for God to get us out of the mess we're in, you better be communicating with heaven. You better be talking to him. You better be reading your Bible so you can hear from him. Tell him what's on your heart and you read your Bible and he'll tell you through the Holy Ghost what you need to know. Seek him. Love him. Look after him. Then it says, verse 26, it is good that a man should both hope and what? Quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Now, <laughs> that word quietly, you don't like it. And I'm going to tell you before I tell you what it is, you ain't going to like it. Quietly means quit complaining. Quit belly aching. Quit griping. Quit fussing because you got to wait on the Lord. Quit carrying on like you don't know what's going on. Immaturity makes you do that. What do children do when they're in a hurry to go somewhere or do something? They'll worry the mortal soup out of you. We going yet? Worse than the world was, are we there yet? How much longer? I'm going to take my kids to Carowinds. And they're both excited in the back seat. If Brandon didn't ask me one time, he asked me 150 times, are we there yet? I'm sitting in the front seat saying, God, why in the world did I ever teach him how to talk? Why did I ever teach him how to talk? Then the worst on top of that is mama. She's been sleeping while he's been hollering, are we there yet? And she wakes up, are we there yet? Oh, give me a break. Give me a break. Just, just cut me some slack. But folks, God can't help you when you doubt him. And when you fuss about the mess you're in and you complain about the mess you're in and you always got to talk to somebody about it, blah, 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 blah. I just, I just listen to me. Just listen. Now, you need to talk to God. Quit wearing everybody else to death. Hello? Why? Because it's just frustrating everybody around you. And it's proving you don't trust God. It's people who don't ever gripe and don't ever complain. They're the ones who really trust God. Number C, rest as he is renewing us. He's not only defending us from the attack of the devil, he's not only saving us from the mess we're in, whether somebody else created it or we did, he's saving us, he's doing it. Don't fuss, don't complain, don't get nervous, just hang loose. He's working. Then rest as he's renewing us. Look at Isaiah 40 verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord, what's that word? That's a preposition, you scholars, am I right? In shall, a preposition. You shall renew, the Lord shall renew their strength. It's called grace. I used to watch older people a lot because that's what I worked with for eight years. There were some old folks like Mary Mayberry didn't have no grace. None, none whatsoever. Ethel Bass, oh my soul. I, I'm not saying anything. If her family was here tonight, I'd say it. If she was sitting here tonight, so I, I called her the Big Mouth Bass. She'd start calling me. Am I lying? Tell the truth, Wendy. On Wednesday morning, she'd start calling me at 8 o'clock in the morning. Who's driving the van tonight? 10 o'clock. Hello, Ethel. Who's driving the van tonight? Ethel, I done told you. All right. 2 o'clock. But Walter, who's driving the van tonight? <laughs> oh, God. Just absolutely word soup out of me. Won't know who's going to drive the van. And then you get on the van and she fussed about everybody got on the van the whole time the road. Am I lying? Tell them the truth. Fussed about it. 
So and so stinks. So and so didn't take a bath. So and so's clothes don't match. Did you hear what they said about me? I mean, just, <laughs> just no end to it. Folks, let me tell you something. I had no grace at all. Then you had some that was just the sweetest people that ever lived in this world. Never hear a word out of them. Lucille Stennett, she was the workingest thing I've met in my life. She'd get on that van, you wouldn't hear a word out of her. Wouldn't hear a thing out of her. She's always happy, glad to see you, on time, waiting. I, I mean, just the perfect van rider. But she had grace. Poor Ethel didn't have grace. Folks, we need grace. We need grace because of our testimony. Your testimony's on the line. If you don't have grace, everybody knows it. Everybody knows you're fretted, you're aggravated, you're mad, you're frustrated. Everybody knows it because you're going to tell them. But if you got grace, everybody knows it too. How in the world are they taking all they're taking? How in the world are they going through everything they're going through? How in the world are they carrying the load they carry? Why? Because they got what? Grace. But they that wait upon the Lord, and, and here's the thought, though. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The thought is the Lord's the one's going to renew their strength. He pours out grace on those who believe. So believe. The more, listen to this. I'm going to give you something deep. I don't know if you can handle it or not. Your brains may explode. Watch Jamie over here. met Brian. He's never going to blow here. If you believe, you receive. If you doubt, you do without. Then it says, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Nothing more beautiful than watching an eagle fly through the sky. Beautiful. Beautiful. Eagles, they're just, they're enjoying themselves. They're up there high looking up. I was riding down the road the other day after the ice storm. And it's funny what you can see after an ice storm because everything's covered with ice. I bet you between here and Lynchburg, I saw 25 hawks. And you know what them hawks was? On top of telephone poles. And they was down there looking for something to eat. They weren't flying. They looked like they were frozen on top of them telephone poles. Just waiting to kill somebody. I thought, there's the average Baptist. Y'all will get that next week. Just sitting there looking around see who they can kill. Who they can shoot. But that eagle, man, he's enjoying life. He got them wings flying. He's going. He's enjoying life. He's not waiting to, to, to pounce on somebody. He's flying free. Then it says, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Last dog story, and I won't tell no more tonight because I'm going to quit. Jason's got, a, got one of these doohickeys for Christmas. What you call that thing? Say it again. Drone. Got a drone. Every night when he comes home from work, he runs to his bedroom. He ain't never going to grow up. He runs to his bedroom and gets that drone. And then he finds out where Charm's at. Y'all let him, he's got it on video. He'll show you. That dog is chasing that drone all over the yard. And that tongue is hanging all the way over. <laughs> She up and down. I mean, that dog is after that drone. But what's so funny is when he stands the drone still, she backs off. <laughs> she won't get near that thing because it's done bitter once. <laughs> she knows better than getting near it. But she'll chase that thing for 30 minutes all over. And I mean, she ain't tired a bit. I'm tired from just doing this. Watch him go back and forth. I'm worried from that. That dog, hey, he'll, he'll stop that drone and then he'll start, and she'll start again. Like she's got endless energy. Oh, to be a Christian with endless energy. Amen? Oh, we should run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Stop and think about them words. They shall walk and not faint. You know what that means? They're moving forward. Somebody quits, they just flop down and quit. They just flop down and quit. But when you keep on going, you get something accomplished. I'll never get long as I live. There's four of us kids. I told you my granddaddy, he'd have a tater patch big as this auditorium. And he had a tractor. 
And my daddy and mama, they love taters. Well, I did too for that matter, but I didn't know where a tater come from until I come to that tater patch. Then I didn't like taters as good as I used to. Because they run that thing up down there and all of us grandchildren, about 25 of us got out there and they give us all a guana sack. How many of y'all remember? Some of y'all don't even know what a guana sack is. Some of y'all need to be ed educated. Give you a guana sack and you go out there and you pick up taters. And I come back and I say, Whew, thank you, Lord. I'm glad this is over. Teddy said, you crazy. Get out the way. Here come granddaddy again. All the way through. Take that grandma sack and dump it in the smoke house. See, some of y'all don't even know what a smoke house is. You think that's the place where you smoke a cigarette? No. That's the place where you smoke a ham. They say, take them taters to the smoke house and throw them in the bin. All 25 of us. Go dump our taters back out there again. Back out there and back. Nine or ten times. One of my cousins what thought they were smarter than the rest of them. They decided they was going to faint and not walk. They sit on the sidelines and watched everybody else pick taters. And everybody on the walking down the field looked at them like, you saw our devil over there quitting on us. We picking up your slack. But see, when it was all over, <laughs> Ruby come out the house and she had a Red billfold, the ugliest thing I ever made on God's green earth. Better as ugly as her purple pocketbook. He was ugly. And she gave everybody. Now, this is a long time ago. Y'all laugh at me and you say, a dollar. What was a, back in my day when you was a kid, a dollar went a long way. She gave every one of them grandchildren a dollar, except for the quitter. <laughs> hey, you shall reap if you think not. Say amen. You gotta keep moving forward. Look, I know bad things happen to good people. 2019 was a bad year for me. I'm glad to see it gone. 2018 was a bad year. Whew. Man, I got negativism running through my veins. 2019 gonna be a better year, amen? But I didn't quit. Say amen. Now look, I know this is embarrassing, but I'm gonna show you. I can't wait to go to the doctor next week. I ain't never been able to do this. I can take my hand, sit inside my britches. I ain't never been able to do that. I ain't never been able to do that. I've had a hard time getting them up, getting them buttoned, but I ain't never had no hard time. I ain't never, I, I think I might if I try to get both hands in that. Quit laughing at me. But that's because I didn't quit. Say amen or oh me. Monday through Friday, I didn't quit. Now on Saturday, I'm going to quit. Saturday, I'm going to eat what I want to. But Sunday through Monday, Friday, I, I, I don't quit. I Quit laughing at me over here and put that thing down. She's over here laughing behind the fan over here laughing at me. You're embarrassed. Let me tell you something. You've embarrassed yourself worse than I've embarrassed you. But anyway, I never quit. <laughs> Hush, so I'm preaching this message up here, not you. Hey, you shall reap if you what? Think not. We need some people not going to quit. I know bad things happen. I know financial troubles come, family troubles come, health troubles come, heartaches come, heartbreaks come, but you don't quit, amen? You press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Every head's bowed and eyes closed.